Platformers are not physics simulations. Mario games don't use Box 2D. You, all, you don't need all of that. What you do need is collision detection. Very easy to implement. Quad trees recursively subdivide the space of your game into quadrants. The problems with floats use circle colliders for the ground and the head. You also want to write your own game engine? Go for it. Good luck. See you in about three or six months when you return to default and start to appreciate it more. Yeah, the topic is no need for a physics engine in a platforming game. Probably most of you know who I am, but if you, if somebody doesn't, it's a bit of introduction about me. I like to code stuff. I'm a type of guy who considers writing his own game engine before writing the actual game. So if you're like me and you also want to write your own game engine, go for it. Good luck. See you in about three or six months when you return to default and start to appreciate it more. Um, I worked with a number of game engines, used many programming languages. And I can tell you that the worst experience was by far with the Clojure language. It's the language of choice for the default editor. Uh, I also make native extensions. I've made quite a few. Uh, making native extensions with C++ is actually like a disease. Once you start, you can't stop. So naturally, I started making full games completely in C++ in default. I prefer statically typed languages to Lua, that's why C++, but I'm also following new languages like Jaya and Odin for that matter. And recently default added support for Teal, which is a typed dialect of Lua. I've tried it. It's working, not to full extent. There's a uh, small issue with their interoperability with their old Lua, but I highly recommend using Teal in the future. And lastly, I have a YouTube channel on game development, so feel free to subscribe. Shameless plug is over, now we can continue. So why no to physics engines, you may ask? Well, because platformers are not physics simulations. And physics engines like box 2 offer a variety of features that are simply not needed for a platformer. Things like bounciness, joints, rotation, kinematic impulses, transfer from one object to another after a collision, like a momentum is transferred. You don't need all of that. What you do need is collision detection and to decide where each object should be after a collision happened. So it's collision resolution. And maybe one other thing is just gravity, but gravity is a very simple formula to implement. In fact, if you have coded a platformer with box 2 d before, you might have used kinematic body type for your character and coded half of that stuff already by yourself. So really, there's not much point to using the entire box 2 d library for your game. So the rest of the time, you're just struggling with box 2 d really fighting with it to make it do what you want it to do instead of what it tries to do by itself. I hope it makes sense. So things like jittering can happen or crazy impulses when, you, when your character suddenly jumps with a very high speed out of nowhere or some convoluted rules for interactions. For instance, it could be like uh, jumping platforms where you can jump on them or from, or from the top and from the bottom uh, you can also jump on them. So it's a one-way uh, jumping platform. Or hard to modify physics properties, for instance, when you want to change the size of your physics objects or instantly change its, I don't know, velocity or something like that. So it's it's hard to implement in box 2 d And of course, moving platforms. Moving platforms could be a nightmare to implement in box 2 d While in my implementation without box 2 d without physics engine, it's very easy. So uh, I check on character collision with, uh, when it collides with a moving platform. I set a reference to the platform inside the character structure. And when I calculate the new position for the character, I simply add their velocities together of, of the character and the moving platform. And the character appears to be uh, walking, standing on the platform just as fine. So it's very easy to implement just if you don't deal with all the uh, uh, regular physics engine stuff. Yeah, it's actually been done before. People have done games and platformers without box 2 d physics uh, for a long time. So Mario games don't use box 2 d 
platform games on NES don't use box to read, so they have very simple calculations for their physics interactions. And it's not something complicated. You have a list of all objects, and if the number of, obje of objects is not crazy high, like in hundreds or thousands, you can check each object in the list with all other objects in the list to find collisions. When you have more objects, you can incorporate more efficient data structures. You want to change the essence of the method. For instance, you can use quad trees. Quad trees recursively subdivide the space of your game into quadrants and put your game objects into those quadrants. Then when a collision check is needed, you only check objects inside the same quadrant or neighboring quadrants. This way, drastically reducing the number of needed collision checks in, in your code. So it's a very efficient way of implementing collisions, but you don't even have to do it by yourself. There are other people who already made it and you can just uh, use their work. And there's also quite amazing extension DAABBCC by uh, Sally Manek for default. I haven't used it myself, but I believe it's a very good alternative. So you can create platformers using it, I think, quite good, and it will work very good. Things become so much simpler and easier when you remove all the unnecessary bits. For a platformer game, really, all what you need in your physics body are just position vector, velocity vector, size. And we don't need mass, density, rotation friction, restitution, angular momentum, all that stuff. We don't need that. It's so much simpler when we only deal with rectangular bodies without rotation. And it's really enough for most platformers, if you think about that. What I would change in that DAA BBCC extension, if I would use it, is I would use integers in C++ instead of floats for body position. So that native extensions uses C++ inside, so not Lua. So you can you have a choice between integers and floats. Floats are needed for smooth acceleration of your character in the game. With integers, the motion would look abrupt and jankier, which actually could be the desired behavior of your particular game, if it's more of a retro style, something like that. Uh, in that case, you won't need floats at all. But usually, we do need floats for intermediate positions when calculating the immediate position when it's affected by the acceleration and with a smooth velocity. But the problems with floats appear because they are a bit imprecise. And it could lead to situations when your character is getting stuck on smooth surfaces. Because what seems smooth to you doesn't uh, seem smooth to the physics engines. For instance, like because of some imperfection, one of the ground block uh, on the floor may be sticking out just by a tiny amount, but it would be enough for your character to trip on it and suddenly stop. For instance, yeah, it could happen like that. So uh, you can also not fit inside small spaces. So when for instance, if your character height is 8 and the gap is also height 8, but because of imperfection, the character doesn't fit inside it when it should. With the integers, it wouldn't be a problem because integers fit perfectly inside each other. One of the bizarre examples I found on the internet is when someone was having that problem uh, of in their re-implementation of Super Mario, Mario would get suddenly stuck between two ground blocks, and he points out on the seam between the ground blocks. And the proposed solution for that was to use circle colliders for the ground and the head. The circle would slide across those imperfections. That's true. And while it is true that often in 3D games like FPS, a capsule shape is used for player body, but those are completely different types of games, don't you think? Like platformers and first-person shooters. Mario didn't have any circle colliders back then, and capsules as well, so we don't really need them. One of the solutions could have been to merge the ground blocks into a single body, but that doesn't work if you have moving platforms, pushable boxes, and other non-static objects that can align with your ground. So yeah, when, when your character uh, moves from the, from the ground to those objects, that character can also get stuck. However, merging ground blocks into a single body 
is still a good implementation. So you'd, you should do that if you can. The best solution really is to use integers or at least round your floats before checking collisions. So I, I think in Lua that would work also fine. Another trick uh, you can use with round coordinates is to be independent of the screen resolution. So if you have your play area like in many pixels, your I don't know, your main character is like 256 pixels by 256 pixels, you don't need those pixels to correspond to the coordinate system of your physics engines. You can have a platformer game that runs in full HD or 4K resolution, and it is not a pixel art game, but you can still snap your physics bodies to a smaller resolution grid like 160 uh, by 90. So if you take 16 by 9, so it could be 160 by 90 or uh, 320 by 180, something like that. You snap your character to the grid, when they stop moving and round the position to the grid when checking the collisions. That gives the player more consistent control, uh, which enables higher precision jumps. And a few words on how to implement collision, re collision resolution without the physics engine. So in, before, with Box study that uh, it, it does it automatically, or more or less automatically if you're using dynamic bodies and static bodies. With kinematic bodies, it is a little more work but for instance when your character is colliding with some object with some static object and there's a predominant axis with uh, for the collision so we check the displacement how to say it uh, of two bodies so here they overlap on the horizontal axis more than on the vertical axis so the vertical correction is smaller than the horizontal one so naturally, we pick the smallest correction possible to make those uh, two objects stop overlapping. In this case, we apply the vertical displacement and we push the player uh, back down away from the static body and it will work like that for a single axis. For dual axis resolution, when you just collide with the corners of two objects, uh, you can't really decide which way to push your character to the left or to the bottom, because there's no predominant axis of displacement. Either variant could happen. You can choose it at random, but uh, you better check the velocity of your character. So if your character is moving predominantly uh, to the right, with the x component of the velocity being higher than the uh, y one. So you want to preserve that motion of your character, and that means you should not stop him uh, horizontally. So instead, you continue the motion horizontally and correct the player vertically. So in this case, the character would go down under the block. Vice versa, if your character jumps and hits the corner of the static block, you preserves the vertical movement of your character and displays the character to the left on the opposite axis. How it works, it's really all there is to simple collision resolution. You don't need, really need a full-blown physics engine for that. And the great uh, part is that you can actually fine-tune all those little behaviors in each case and make your game really unique and implement really crazy rules which would make your game stand out from other platformer games so with some more interesting mechanics that would differentiate it from other games so you can implement some helpers for instance yeah if you implement such uh correction uh you would suddenly realize that your character now easily jumps inside small narrow spaces so if there's like i know I don't know, a shoot uh, at the top of the player, some small hallway. Uh, when you jump and you hit that uh, small corner, you don't stop the player and uh, the player slides inside that open space oh, very naturally, very easy. The same thing, but with the ledges, is when you jump from one ledge to another and your character doesn't really make the jump, but you see that there's only a very small correction to push the character forward and you just push him up a little on the platform so he would not just trip on the very corner very edge of the platform and would make the jump so it's also a very easy technique uh, of course there's coyote time i'm sure you all know about that so small timer after the character leaves the platform uh, in which you still would um, process the jump button.
And the same in reverse, jump anticipation is when you press uh, the jump button uh, while the character is still in the air and you track the time and check the time when the character actually lands on the platform. If that value is less than some amount, reasonable amount, like, I don't know, 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, you remember that the jump button was pressed and you, if it's still pressed, it makes the character jump. So it's also a very good technique for the player to feel more fluent, more enjoyable to play your game. As for level design, I can always recommend LDTK a level editor. Uh, it's really very easy to make grid-based platformer levels uh, with different, even different objects. You can uh, make really complicated stuff uh, on that. And you can export it to uh, JSON format and read JSON in in the engine in default. And it works really nice. I, I recommend it. Uh, when you don't use physics engine, you can create your levels much faster, I would say. And that's really it. I thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed my talk. And finally, I can stop sharing the screen, I think.